I, I remember T-Pain was talking about why he sold his Bugatti. He said that uh, his radiator went out and it was going to be $200,000. Like, niggas don't think about <laughs> the $200,000 radiator when you buy a Bugatti. So similarly, that model that you just pulled, what is her $200,000 radiator? Right. You know, that, 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 that girl that you're super interested in, but it's really only because of her mom and dad's genetics. It's not because of y'all's person uh, uh, conversation. It's not because of y'all's vibe, whatever the case may be. It's because she is a trophy for you to validate your masculinity. And uh, you are her, her latest caretaker. What's going on, brother? I'm good, brother. I'm good. Appreciate the uh, support again, man. That means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. No problem. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. So talk yeah. to me. What's... You touched on you touched on so many different things that uh, that you know I have I'm of the same mind the same mind of so uh, right down to you, you you looking at it from both sides. Um, the only thing I would push back on was the the last thing that you said about the um, the, the, the some of the good girls uh, because they see men go after beauty that <clears throat> see that they go the men go after beauty that women start to say you know what i can just be you know, vapid and, and just all aesthetic and no and, 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 you know nothing profound to me because that's what women, women uh, chase after but other parts of your conversation is what i want to pull to rebut that first when women say that because women say that to me as well i mean that that's a common thing if y'all wasn't chasing after big booties if y'all wasn't you know liking so many of these these girls we wouldn't be trying to look like that and to that i say it's it's a multi-tiered um uh, sort of rebuttal um, but one of them one of them is this men are visual right um when you think about the five love languages i believe that they're uh, acts of service it's a uh, physical touch it's um, uh, gift giving, I think quality time, and I don't know what the fifth one was. It, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a words of, you said word, words of affirmation, quality time, gift giving. Words of affirmation. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So when you think about the love languages, maybe four of them are universal that they can go either way, but one of them is almost eighty to ninety percent on the feminine imperative. And we all know which one that is, right? It's gift giving, right? It's 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 the act of sort of they they try to change it to also giving gifts as a form of love language, but mainly people use it as a way of receiving gifts, right? Uh, uh, you know, as you know, women uh, uh, big that up. But and even though eighty percent of women identify, it cannot only eighty percent of the people who identify with the gift giving as a love language as women and we can't really say anything about it there is one major love language that's for men that is never acknowledged and is almost our raison d'etre for even being in this realm which is that men are visual it is one of our biggest motivators in the world if you look up a science study they did it back i want to say about probably about 2010 and what they did was they looked, they showed men pictures of different women. And some of these women had, um, I don't wanna say it's a BBL surgery, but it was something like that that enhanced their curves. And when they studied those men's brains, they saw that the same area of the brain that lights up when you do drugs or alcohol was the same the part of the brain that lit up when the men visually saw a beautiful curvy woman. It literally is an endorphin, a, a, a drug, drug-inducing level endorphin that releases in our brain when we see a beautiful, curvy woman. Like it doesn't matter if you are a drug dealer or a doctor, we all it all happens to us. I mean, think about how just the 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 the, the term trophy wife. A man could work a hundred hours a week for a hundred weeks straight to build a hundred million dollar company. And what is his reward to himself is to get a, a beautiful woman that probably worked at Starbucks, you know, and that's his reward. 
right? Like he, it, all the money makes sense if he can have access to this woman. But we we downplay how important visual is for us as men, how motivating it is for us as men, right? You know how many men I know for a fact, if they when they got accessibility to a beautiful woman, I'm talking about from a genuine desire standpoint, that like the battery in their back was, it was massive. You know, you couldn't tell them anything, right? If they, they needed to knock on a hundred doors a day or make a thousand phone calls or do a thousand push-ups, the, the fact that they knew there was they they were doing it for and had genuine access to a beautiful woman, it was such a motivating thing. So once we understand that the a, a good portion of us, uh, us as men are um, we respond in a very positive manner to a beautiful woman. It has that kind of effect on us. So the next thing is that you stated was that, you know, you see a lot of men will be able to uh, marry women who are, you know, not as, not as gorgeous. They're not like a lot of the, they're not marrying video vixens. Like a lot of the billionaires and millionaires and titans of industry aren't, mar aren't marrying video vixens. And I, I agree with that. What, what, what I always don't like about it is because we don't even have an official love language that since we are visual, we cannot even state to say that some of these women just through their body could improve their attractiveness to the men and not through BBL. I'm talking about just strictly gym work, just gym work. When you look at some of these um, natural, um, like a very Afrocentric natural woman who also happens to be uh, uh, um, in the gym. I'm not talking about like bodybuilding. I'm just talking about these women just in the gym that's looking good. Look at their pages. There's literally tens of thousands of men worshiping these women. They're not BBLs, not bust down weave, not crazy out, none of that stuff. These women are natural, but they're also in the gym. And there are literally tens of thousands of men in these comments worshiping them. And when you understand that uh, one of the comments you, you stated about like some of these men will have a, a six as a wife, but a, uh, a you know, a, a may have a bad as a mistress. That to me says that if you are going to be a man of value, of, of, of some type of means, and you're monogamous, how come the difficulty of monogamy for us as men is discounted, right? So if you're a man and you are monogamous and you're, you're, you are going out into the world as a man of desire or a man of value, that monogamy dumbbell is like a hundred pound dumbbell that you have to lift on a daily basis. Monogamy for a woman is difficult, but might only be like a five pound dumbbell. And it's offense and defense. Your offense, you're going out there, you're trying to make sure that you don't put yourself in any kind of position to, to, uh, to, to not be, uh, 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 to, to keep your fidelity. But for women, you know, it's not as difficult for them to do that because they don't have as much interest in just men in general, as we, as we know through all data statistics, they just believe that the majority of men are not attractive or not desirable at all. But for us as men, why is it that if I'm going to be monogamous and you know that I like a, a visual thing, can, the woman that we're committed to, what is preventing her from going hard in the gym? What is prevent, preventing her from uh, 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 creating the kind of body that will be desirable to me. And I didn't even really come across mm -hmm. this concept myself. I first heard it from an, another YouTuber, a woman. Her name was Six Goddess. And it made <laughs> are you, are you, are you, And I you mean, stopped. you mean a stripper? Six yeah, yeah, that's Six Goddess. I think yeah. I don't know if she's a stripper or not. She was, yes. Okay. So but she she speaks about, you know, exercise and and um and speaks about food and, and not being obsessed with food and 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 and, and you know, doing things for a man that's going to be doing things for you. But I feel like us, a, a lot of a lot of times when when we talk about, um, I think Kevin Samuels used to have the term adjustable, adjustable six. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people fail to realize Kevin Samuels was saying adjustable six is what, what men want. Like, we, they're, they're okay with that. Like, mm -hmm. th that's that's cool. Like, we, we like the adjustable six. And they don't like that term 
But if you have an adjustable sex as a woman and you are giving her everything that you have, including monogamy, mm -hmm. why can't she put the work and reward you for that? Reward your sort of um, um, just being a good man of value. Listen, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I, and I think, you know, to your point, uh, there, there are multiple things at play. I think um, my evidence kind of leans towards like men are not naturally monogamous. So okay. I think that yeah. that's the first hurdle. Right. And, and I say that because um, like in, in Nigeria, we have a term called sea finish. Really? So that that means that it's basically like a colloquial term for the hedonic treadmill, the hedonic adaptation. I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but yeah. to you know, for 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 every great thing that you get that you acquire, at some point it it no longer it loses its luster, right? Yeah. If you if you got that car you always wanted for about two months, it'll be that car you always wanted. At month three, it's just a car. Mm -hmm. And you might forget that it's the car that you always wanted until, let's say, your homeboy take it around the block and you see it coming. You're like, yo, that's how I'm pulling up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I've literally had homeboys say the same exact thing. And the same thing happens with women. Uh, this dude on, on Instagram is a podcast I saw. He made a good point. He said, you know, that the, there's a difference between a treasure and a trophy. Mm. Right. Uh, a lot of men are looking for trophies, but they should be looking for treasures. And and to your point, but to elaborate on it a little bit about women's beauty being a huge motivator. Um, a lot of times, if, if we're being honest, if we're being honest, uh, a big part of the motivation is less about how she makes you feel. And mm. it's more about how she makes you look. OK. When you could tell your homeboys, when your uncle at the at the cookout, that's you, nephew. Right. That's where the dopamine comes from. It, it, the the fact that she validates say, who yeah. you think you are now. Mm -hmm. That whether you 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 got the money, whether you finally got the body, or whatever the case may be, yeah. she's the trophy. She's the NBA championship. Mm -hmm. But the jump shot is what got you the NBA championship. So my my only point has always been. Uh, and, and to go back to the treasures versus trophies piece is like, um, if if we are so fixated on trophies, you know, that Jamaican song, girl, you are walking trophy. Uh, not only are we incentivizing more trophy-esque women or more trophy-esque disposition, yeah. but we're also doing ourselves a disservice because there's a point that you get to and you start realizing that and, and and dudes will tell you this you do not want them trophies yeah. there is something called opportunity cost in economics yes. the reason why the beautiful women tend to have faults that that uh sometimes are in opposition to their beauty it's it really boils down to opportunity cost the people with the best personalities are usually not the most beautiful Right. The people with the, you know, with the with the best insight are usually not the most vocal, right? So which opportunity costs are we prioritizing in our uh, uh, seeking of a woman as men or, you know, on the female side, you know, they are also validated with, oh, damn, your boyfriend tall or damn, your boyfriend got money. Uh, similarly to how we're validated by, can you still hear me? I think the I, camera cut out. Yeah, the camera cut out there. Yeah. yeah, I'll plug it back in. Um, but yeah, they 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 are similarly validated by that. And I think if we are going to change that paradigm, um, we have to in a sense lead by example as well. But I'm gonna give you the final final word, brother. And I'm gonna um, fix this camera. Okay, so the, the only thing I, I would I would say to that is that if if we were to kind of like I don't want to say put this in a vacuum, but let's just come up with a scenario of a woman that you really, really like. Like, I don't know, like if a, a crush from high school or, or college or, or work. I'm talking about like you really, really like this woman. She's she was fine. She's smart. All these type of things. But let's say nobody, nobody ever complimented her on you. Nobody ever complimented uh, you for being with her or even in fact, uh, they tried to disparage her, but 
you, you have eyes, you, you're with her, and, and everything head to toe, she's, she's gorgeous to you, right? Or relatively gorgeous. It's almost like the Shallow Howl. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie in Shallow yeah. Howl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Carrey. Uh, yeah, the uh, what is it? Um, the big guy, I forgot his name. He played in Rock of Rock School or something like that. Um, but the the oh the, oh uh, uh black black yeah yeah, yeah 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 Jack Black Jack Black yep. One of the premise of Shallow How was is that because he saw her as highly desirable, when his homie would say, "Yo, what are you doing with her? She's not that attractive." He'd be like, "What? Then you're crazy." So for us as men. Beauty is such a powerful motivator that even if Unk wasn't like, yo, I see you now, we still going to be on top of it because we see her. And that's how much it affects us, like I said, almost from a scientific level. Um, but it, it does help and it does add to that. And some men who do have uh, sort of, um, I don't want to say weaker mindsets, but are um, more affected by uh, sort of social commentary could be like, man, maybe maybe she's not as what I thought she is, and I need I need to I need to change, and that will get into a little bit. What you're talking about, uh, hedonic treadmill, a little bit will put him down on that slope a little bit. Him like, mm, maybe he's not all as cracked up to be. But for the most part, when you see somebody and you're with them, I'm talking about all the other things because most of the times when you're with somebody and it's not as cracked up to be, it's because they don't have none of the, the personality things to match up to that, right? They're not kind, caring, cooperative, supportive. You know, fem like uh, she's not she doesn't have a lot of those qualities or traits. But if she does, and she also meets your your your, uh, your requirements visually, it doesn't matter what anybody's seeing on the outside. You're going to be like, they're crazy. Like I know what I like. So, um, but that's how men, in my in my opinion, are wired. So even if we have adjustable six, if that adjustable six is willing to, and I'm just talking about body related, just cut, you know, just on like neck down, put a, put the work in a gym, um, and, and and try to be. Uh, 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 mainly, from a body standpoint, visually appealing to their to their man. You know that's all they have to do, and that 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 does. And once again, they already are this wonderful woman. What is preventing them from doing this other part? I'm not talking about bust down. I, I'm not talking about none of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the what is it? The uh, you know the period look. You know the girls mm -hmm. like the period. That I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just neck down is. Yeah. And, and as you know, most men are not really even into crazy BBLs. The majority mm -hmm. of us, you might look at it, you might go to a strip club, look at it, but that's not like the deciding factor. If like you talk to a lot of men, a lot of men have either dealt with a woman, had a crazy body, and be like, no, nah, she, you know, I, I don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. but, and so it's not a deciding factor. But just having a, a, a woman who's committed to a healthy lifestyle with all the other qualities and traits and an adjustable six. I think men would take that eight times out of ten. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I guess my, my main point is um, number one, everybody comes with an opportunity cost. For every benefit that a person has, there's a mm. fault that's attached to it. Mm. And I, you know, kind of like you know, with with cars, right? Uh, my my new dream car is actually a, a Toyota Tundra. Okay. <laughs> now, is is a Toyota Tundra, am I going to pull up and people be like, ah, damn, no. It probably would have been that Mercedes or that, you know, that uh, uh, Ferrari that I used to want, right? But when you start thinking about uh, reliability, when you start thinking about longevity, uh, even when you start thinking about fun, you start realizing that there's a reason why even the people who can afford it uh, usually lease it, yeah. right? Because I, I remember T-Pain was talking about um, why he sold his Bugatti. He said that uh, his radiator went out and it was going to be $200,000. Like, niggas don't think about <laughs> the yeah. $200,000 radiator yeah. when yeah. you buy a Bugatti. So similarly, that model that you just pulled, what is her $200,000 radiator? Right. You know, that 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 girl that you're super interested in, but it's really only because of her mom and dad's genetics. It's not right. because of y'all's person uh, uh, conversation. It's not because of y'all's vibe, whatever the case may be. It's because she is a trophy for you to validate your masculinity. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are her her latest caretaker. Mm 
yeah. right? What, what, one of the things that was interesting, um, I was watching a documentary about diamonds. And basically, you know, the, the short version is diamonds are bullshit. They're not worth right. what we think they're worth. There's an artificial scarcity right. uh, placed on diamonds to jack up the price. But what's funny is they ran a survey, I think, in the uh, in the 90s um, about if, you know, they asked men, they asked women, would you forego diamonds um, uh, if it meant something? I forgot what it was. Mm-hmm. Like if, if it meant... You know, uh, you, you would uh, you you couldn't get married, whatever the case may be. Most women in the survey, and again, it's a survey, right? Most women were willing to forego the diamonds, mm. but most men were not. Mm. And what was interesting is, as they investigated that, they found out that even though diamonds had been marketed to women, diamonds are forever, diamonds are the symbol of love, or whatever the case may be. The other subtle marketing that was happening was, you know, uh, uh, an engagement diamond should be three months salary. It should be yeah. two months salary. So men subconsciously, by the same company, the Bears, they got into, uh, we got it into our minds that until I'm able to afford a diamond, three months salary aside, two months salary aside, mm. I'm not him yet. Mm. Until I'm able to put that smile on her face, I'm not him. So now it's become less about her. Mm. And just like with the beauty of women that I, I'm, I'm saying we consume, yeah. um, it's more about validating ourselves. And I'm just saying that we need to have more honest conversation about that. Because the, part, the, the, the love of your life... Uh, she's not going to be the most gorgeous, but there's a reason for that because, you know, you you ask the question, what is she doing? She's probably developing those other skills, those hobbies, those uh, 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 interests yeah. that actually make her compatible or make her a good partner, make her your Toyota Tundra. Yeah. <laughs> but we too busy, right. to your point, which is real, we too busy looking at these Ferraris. And mm-hmm. the the reality is for a lot of dudes... Um, we we have to drive the Ferrari to realize it ain't shit. Yeah, absolutely. Like you, you have to get that shit out of your system. Unfortunately, you know. Yeah. But yeah, not, uh, this was a good conversation, man. I appreciate yeah, you, you again, brother. Yes, sir. Take it easy, man. You too. Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end, please click that like and subscribe button. Also, share this with somebody that you think would gain value from it. Click the thumbnail at the top if you want the full video. Click the thumbnail at the bottom if you want a video that's closely related to this. Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys for watching. Check out some more of our content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.